Two of the unsung heroes of horror movies are Carl Lemley and Lon Chaney Sr. Lon Chaney Sr. is not only the father of Lon Chaney Jr., aka the Wolfman, but Lon Chaney Sr. was known as the Man of a Thousand Faces. He was a king of silent horror. And then there's Carl Lemley, who without him, horror movies would nowhere be near as big a deal as they are now. He not only brought Dracula and Frankenstein to the big screen for the first time, his beginning was today's movie, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. No, not the Disney version. Trust me, these two could not be any more different. The only thing that seems to connect them is their source material, based on the novel by Victor Hugo. It tells the story of Quasimodo, the Hunchback, played here by Cheney who lives in the bowels of Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris and ringing the bell. Unlike the Disney film where Quasimodo is just misunderstood, Quasimodo in this movie is just not kind to anybody. However, when he f meets a gypsy named Esmeralda, he grows feelings for her and tries to protect her from a mad, court a mad chief justice who charges her for a crime that she did not commit. This movie was a passion project for Lon Chaney Sr., to the point where he told Universal that he was going to set up his own production company just to make this movie. As I mentioned, Lon Chaney Sr. was known as the Man of a Thousand Faces, because he would not only do his own makeup, but he would basically do different kinds of makeup. Last year, when I covered The Phantom of the Opera, he looked like he looked like a demon. He basically looked like he didn't have a face or his face was completely burned off and it was just a skull there. But in but in the Hunchback of Notre Dame, he basically looks like an incredibly deformed man who has had no opportunities in life. And despite his bitterness, I actually grew to kind of like him or at least feel somewhat sympathy for him. Cheney not only did his own makeup, but if my memory serves me right, he also did his own stunts. I looked it up to try and confirm that, and there was no definitive answer. I remember a long time ago watching a video from, I believe it was Dark Corners, where, where he said that Cheney did his own stunts. So don't quote me on that. But what I do remember, it was said that Cheney did his own stunts, which was very impressive. Patsy Ruth Miller was good as Esmeralda, and the Chief Justice was good as well. However, if there's one thing that the animated movie did do better, it is adding a touch of madness to Judge Frollo, because good lord, that man is nuts. Not only is this an incredibly important silent horror movie, it's also a very rare one. The version that I watch is watched for this review is considered the show-at-home version, as none of the original prints of this movie have survived over the years. To make a long story short, back when movies were first being made, they were filmed on film that was coated in nitrate, which is insanely flammable. Like, you put a match even close to the film they used back then, it would just be a straight-up bonfire. Thank God for the fine folks at Kino Lorber for restoring this to where it looks like the original with the knowledge of knowing that it isn't the original. But as it turns out, this movie would be only the beginning of the boom period that would be experienced throughout the late 20s and all of the 30s, so stay tuned for that.